Adobe Photoshop is the big daddy of image editing software. I don't know any professional photographers or designers, etc., who don't use it. But why is it so popular? Well, it's eminently customizable. You can make Photoshop work to suit you. You can change all kinds of settings and the way it displays things. And it displays things very well, particularly colors. Photoshop manages, manages colors brilliantly. And there is a vast array of tools to help you. In fact, I want you to consider Photoshop as an enormous top quality toolbox full of the very best tools money can buy. And then you can use them to work on your images. Now with any tool, there's no right or wrong way of using it. You could use a hammer to bang in a nail or to break ice. You could use a screwdriver to put in a screw or open a tin of paint or indeed stir a tin of paint. It's up to you how you use the tool. The trick is to find out what the tool does. Now Photoshop in itself is a tool, so what we're going to do in this film is have a look through. I want to introduce you to what Photoshop looks like and how you can customise it. So let's have a quick look and see what we've got here. First off, when you open Photoshop, it's going to look something like this. This is the default layout of Photoshop. It's where it puts the different panels. Beginning at the top, we have got in this area along here, this is the main kind of menu and it's like most other pieces of software. You've got a file menu and, and, and an edit menu. Now in the file menu, it's all to do with your files. The top five options are different ways of opening an image file. The next little bit, edit in image ready. This is more about another piece of software which comes with Photoshop called image ready. It's specifically for preparing an image file for the internet. Do you know what? I've never used it. I actually do it in Photoshop. But there you go. It comes with it. Notice this area here, this is all to do with saving and closing image files. They're all greyed out at the moment because we haven't got an image file there to save or to close. Once there is, they'll all come to life and be in bold black. Down the bottom here is where you print. It's all the usual stuff you'd expect to do, be able to do to a file with a few little added extras because they're image files. In the edit menu, we've got all the stuff to do with editing an image file. Well, not just an image file, any file. You know, you can cut, you can copy, you can paste, all that kind of stuff. Again, with more options because it's to do with imagery. In the image menu, actually, I'm going to go and open an image. Let's just open something. So if I just click open, and it will take me to a place where I can open an image file, just like any other piece of software. So I'm going to go into this folder here where I keep my image files. I'm going to go and find an image file to open. What shall we open? Let's go to CT Productions. This is a, an electronics company that I made some images for. Here we go. I was working on this the other day. So I choose it. I click open and there we go. I've got an image open in Photoshop. When I go to the image menu, I've now got various different options open to me. There are all sorts of things going on here. And wherever you see one of these little black triangles like that one there, there's a dropout menu to the side with more options, more good stuff is contained in them. In the adjustments menu, this is where you'd adjust things to do with your image. So like this top section is all to do with adjusting brightness and contrast really. There are lots of different ways of doing it and different tools to help you. This bit here is more to do with colour and there's other stuff down the bottom. In the layer menu, this is all about working with layers. You've probably heard of them. I don't know if you've ever worked with them. If you're not sure what they are, a layer is a, like a sheet of clear plastic acetate and you can copy an image onto a layer and you can have two or three images one above the other. Why would you want to do that? Well, you might want to make an HDR image, for example. You can blend sort of a bright area from this to a dark area of that by removing bits of one and mixing them together. You can create a montage of some of your favorite images by creating a new empty document and then bringing different images, on images in on layers and you can move them around and sort of mix them together. More on layers in a different film. But under the layer menu, there's lots of good stuff to do with layers. The select menu is all about selection and this is one of the most powerful things about Photoshop. You can select an area of an image. Let's say you've got a picture where this area is too dark and this area is a little bit bright where you could select the bright bit and darken it and select the dark bit and brighten it a bit without having to sort of do it to the whole image. Same with adjusting colours and things. Those are two very simple uses of selection. In a minute I'll show you that there are lots of different tools to help you select things. The filters menu, this has got 
all sorts of different pre-made filters. There are artistic filters, so you can put, you know, arty effects onto things if you wanted to, like a coloured pencil or a brush or film grain to make it look like an old black and white photograph, for example. There's also in here the sharpening options. Now, sharpening isn't something that's really existed in the days of film, but with digital it's really, really important, and not just because you haven't got a picture quite in focus, but I'm going to talk about sharpening in a different film. The view menu is about how you'd view whatever it is you've got open. So for example here, if I click zoom in, I'm zooming in to the image like that. If I click zoom out, I can go back out again. If I want to see the actual pixels, I click on actual pixels. And as you can see, it's kind of zoomed right in. I can see the actual pixels of the image so I can find out how sharp it is or whatever. Let's just zoom back out again. There's another menu next to the view menu, which is called the windows menu. Here it is here, windows. All of these boxes around here, like this one here and all these over here, these are called windows. And you'll notice there are tabs within them with more windows, with more alternatives and options for you to work on your images. Now you may not need all of these. In fact, I use very few of the default windows. And it's in the windows menu where you can manage which ones are displayed. All these ones here with ticks are displayed over there. Did you notice that one just disappeared? It's because I unticked the color window. There we go, and it's just come back again. A really cool thing is you can actually customize which of these you like to work with and save it as a workspace for yourself. And then you can choose which ones you want. And I'm going to show you a bit about that in a tick when I've finished with this menu bar, because the next one is help. I learned Photoshop by reading the big fat book which came with the disc, as well as using the help section. I think the Photoshop help section is brilliant. At the top, you've obviously got Photoshop help. If we just click that, it'll open up a browser. And uh, let's just do a little search. Now, if you search for tutorial, tutorials, and do a search, it will go off and it will see what it can find. Here we go. And if I click on tutorials, there's a little list of some tutorials. For example, removing red eye in an image. And here you go, a step-by-step -step guide as to how to remove red eye from an image. There are more in there as well. And I strongly recommend you go and find an image file and bung it into Photoshop and have a play with some of these tutorials because they'll really, really get you thinking and understanding the power of Photoshop and how you can use it. In fact, there are even ready-made tutorials at the bottom of the help menu here. And as you can see, they have a little black dropout triangle. So there's more stuff going on down here too. The next bar here, this is an options toolbar. And what happens, this toolbar here will change according to which tools you're using in this window. This is the tools palette. And all of these are tools that you will use to work on your image files. And I don't know if you can see, but that options menu here is changing as I click on different tools. They're options for the way these tools work. The top part of this toolbar is to do with ways to select or cut up your images. And if you hover over a tool, as you can see, it brings up a little description explaining what it is. That was the rectangular marquee tool. I don't know why, but they call a marquee tool is a, is a way of selecting things, of drawing something. Let's do one quickly. Suppose I wanted to select just this area down here of the image. I can click and I can draw a rectangle around that little lumpy bit. Now there's some marching ants around it. That says I've selected it. If I move it over here, I can move that selection around so I've just got the bit that I want. Now I could do something to that bit, for example. Let's say I want to just make that bit black and white. I'm doing this very roughly and not terribly well. There are, again, lots of different ways I could make that bit black and white. The way I'm going to do it is use the image menu and go to adjustments. And I'm going to go down here to the color bit and I'm going to get the saturation tool. Let's say I remove all the color saturation. There we go. That part of the image has gone black and white. And to get rid of the selection, I just double click into it. So that bit's gone black and white. And it's rather messy, isn't it? Because I haven't done it nicely. I haven't selected all around those shapes and edges. The next little batch of tools we've got here are all things that can be done to an image. So let's say you could draw some lines on it. We could pick up a brush here. Let's say I wanted to 
draw a line on a picture. Well, I can also choose what kind of brush I want because this little sub-menu here has now given me different options to do with a brush. In here, let's drop it down. I can choose how big the brush is. I can choose things like, what sort of a line do I want? Well, actually, let's go, I'm gonna choose a fairly standard brush. I'm gonna make it, I've just messed myself up. Let's just change the size to about that. And I want a nice, harsh, sharp edge to it. Now, if I wanted, I could paint a bit of my image in like that. I mean, I'm only doing this to show you what it is. It's not very exciting, is it? If I wanted to uh, lighten an area of the image, for example, I could go into this area here. This is what's called the dodge and burn tool. And if I click it, it has a black triangle there. <clears throat> there are different options, dodge and burn. Dodging is from the old black and white printing or color printing even, when you had an enlarger and you dodged areas out. So if I wanted to make an area brighter, I could choose the dodge tool. And up here in the options, it's saying, how much brightness do you want? Well, 74% is a lot, but I'll leave it there just so you can see what I mean. If I wanted to brighten that area, I could just click on there and I can just kind of like work away like that. And look, there we go, very roughly, I'm brightening that bit and I'm making a horrible mess, aren't I? <clears throat> Down here, we have some more options. There's a text tool, there's a what's called a pen tool. This is another way of making different types of selections. You can even make notes about your image file. This is a color dropper. If I wanted to find out what color something was, I can pick that up and I can sample a color. Let's choose this green bit here, and you'll notice that this little square here has gone to green. Below it, we've got masking tools, which I'm not going to talk about at all at this moment. And there are different ways of viewing your image with these little three buttons here. These three little buttons, not little three. If I click the full screen mode, you see it's now opened that window up to take the full screen, but I've still got my menus along the top there. If I click the next one, it goes to full, full screen and it loses the menu. So I've got even more space to work with if I wish. Let's put it back to how it was. And this bottom button here, which changes color, that's that opening image ready thing again, which as I say, I don't really use it. Let's take a little look at what these windows do. Now, here we go, the tool palette. The, you can move them. You don't have to have it there. If you want to keep it down there, you can just drag it over there or you can pop it over there. I sometimes drag it almost off the screen and leave a bit poking out because I want more room to work in. I just drag it back up when I want it. Also, these windows over here, they can all be moved around. You can do what you want with them and you can also customize them as well. And this is really cool. I mentioned it earlier. Let's say you want to keep something like this navigator tool. The navigator tool is just another way of zooming in. As I say, there are many, many options. If I want to zoom into this image, I can get hold of that slider and just kind of move the slider and that will zoom the image in and out. If I want to move around the image, let's go and look at the bit I made black and white. If I can get hold of that red square and drag it and look, there we go. I'm in close on that little area there. I can even type in the percentage I want to see. So let's say I want to see it at 100%. That's flat out the whole lot. I type in 100 and hit enter and there we go. I'm now viewing that at 100% and I can have a really close look at what's going on around that area. If I just put it back out to full screen, something like that, there we go, that's good. Let's say you like the idea of that tool and you want to keep it there while you're practicing Photoshop. Well, you can drag that out of that little palette and have it separately and get rid of the rest of the window. So we've just got that tool in that palette there. Another very useful tool in Photoshop, particularly when you're practicing, is this little window here. It's called the history palette. If you want to go back to something you've done earlier, you can do it through the edit menu, you can do undo dodge tool and that will get rid of the last bit of brightening I did, but it'll only go back one step. In the history states, I can go back lots of states. Look, as I go back up through here, I'm removing all those dodges and this area up here is now starting to get back to how it used to look. Let's scroll up. Here we go, the brush tool. Let's get rid of that nasty black line, you see? I can move back in stages through the image if I want to change the black and white of that little area here, it's brought back the marching ants and I go back one and there we go. And I can even go back to the point when I moved the selection from side to side. <clears throat> so the history tool is a really, really useful thing to have. We can drag that out of there as well. But what's even cooler, we could put that in here with our navigator. 
Now we've got two tools in one little window, so they're not taking up space on the screen. If you want to get rid of all these other windows because you're not likely to be using them at the moment, just close them like that and they're gone. And now all you have is this one window here and you can make it bigger if you like. Notice it's got a little black triangle here and if I click that, that gives you all sorts of options currently to do with this window. Suppose you want to put your tool palette over here as well because you just prefer, prefer to have things over there on the right. Now you think, well, actually, that's how I would like to have Photoshop set up. Here's a really cool one. Go to the window option, workspace, save workspace, and you'll get a little window like this. And you can save what it's called. So you could call it learning. And, whoops, because it's first steps. Actually, let's call it first steps. S-T-E-P-S. -E first steps, and I save it. Now, when you come to Photoshop, you can change things around. When I first opened this Photoshop before I began filming, I saved the workspace as the standard default setting. So if I go into here, workspace, can you see here we've got default. That's what I saved before we began. And if I click that, it'll put Photoshop back the way it was. So you could save different workspaces as you get more into Photoshop and how you're using it. You could start to save custom workspaces, so you could have one just for, if you're working with colour, you could have a colour workspace within Photoshop, which will give you things like your, your colours and your swatches and, and things like that that you're going to need to work with colour. That's just a suggestion, it's not something I've actually ever done. If you want to go back to your own personal workspace, you can go back into here, workspace, first steps, and it's put it back like that. As you can see, I like to use two monitors because I use this one here, which is an expensive, well-calibrated monitor, and this one here, I can just keep it for windows and tools and things like that because I want this area for my image because I want to be able to see it really clearly. So I have one saved called Mics. There it is, and when I click that, you should be able to see that some of my palettes have left here and they're on the other monitor over here on this side. If I get rid of it again, you will hopefully notice. Put it back to default. They've disappeared from this monitor, haven't they? Put them back. Workspace, mics. So there you have a little introduction as to how Photoshop works and how incredibly flexible it is. All the different options that it has for you to customize the program itself for the way that you like to work. So I hope you found that helpful as we go on through the next series of films. I'm going to start showing you how to work on your images. But for now, get your Photoshop open and have a play around with the layout so you can set it up for the way you want to work.